Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy to celebrate with spiritual hymns your appearance to Thomas and your apostles. You desire to strengthen the faith of your Holy Church by inviting Thomas to put his hand into your pure side. Strengthen our faith like his in the mystery of your glorious resurrection. Fill us with your ho hope and love so that we may raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your living Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity, Friends and Saints, Kyrie this Son. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to God the Father, who sent his only begotten Son for the salvation of the world, and to the Son who filled the universe with a new light by his glorious resurrection and to the Holy Spirit to embrace the hearts of the apostles with joy and with peace. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ our God, by your glorious resurrection, you gave joy to those in heaven and on earth, uniting them spiritually as one. Eight days later, you visited your holy apostles and entered the upper room where they had gathered with the door shut. You invited Thomas to see and to put his hands into your side, pierced by the lance and to touch your hands, wounded by the nails. He proclaimed his faith, crying out, My Lord and my God, and you made him a witness of your glorious resurrection. Therefore, we who have been saved by your victorious cross implore your grace and ask you with the fragrance of this incense to grant us the blessing that you have promised to those who have not seen you and yet have believed. Make us worthy to celebrate this new Sunday with joy and with gladness and prepare us and our departed for the joyful and eternal feast that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your living Holy Spirit forever. O Christ our God, accept our incense as we commemorate your appearance to your holy apostle St. Thomas. As you were pleased by his faith and profession of your divinity, accept our prayers and petitions and favorably remember all the faithful departed who have died hoping in you, and grant them eternal rest, and we raise glory and thanks to you forever. 
Thomas said, I have sinned, grant forgiveness, I shall go and preach your word. Lord, God, you accepted what the just have offered you. Now accept in your mercy A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we know the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we are clearly apparent to God, and I hope we are also apparent to your consciousness. We are not condemning ourselves to you again, but giving you opportunity to boast of us so that you may have something to say to those who boast of external appearance rather than the heart. For if we are out of our minds, it is for God. If we are rational, it is for you. For the love of Christ impels us. Once we have come to the conviction that one died for us all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is in a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, new things have come. And all this 
from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us the message of reconciliation. So, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle John writes, Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, and although the doors were locked, he stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and be no longer unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas answered, and he said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Thank you. 
Peace be to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Shlom kul chun, peace to you all. The icon that we have out here on the tetrapod is not necessarily the best icon, but I picked it up when I was at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy, because precisely it has written, I have no idea why, since it's a Western image, but has the Shlom Kulchun written on the side of the pedestal that our Lord is standing on. Peace be to you is what our Lord greets the apostles when he first sees them on the day of the resurrection. This peace, as we've mentioned to you, the Shlomo, the Shlom is the well-being and the wholeness our Lord is offering to them, not just simply a greeting, but of this I won't say imposition, but of this granting of health and healing. I have a very long commentary in the bulletin this week because it really describes to you what New Sunday is. It's not Divine Mercy Sunday. It's not, it's, it is New Sunday for us in our calendar. And New Sunday is this sense of the new creation. And so you have a very long reflections in the bulletin because if I tried to explain it to you, it would just be a conference for an hour. And we already hit close to an hour with sermons anyway, so we don't need to make them any longer than they do now. St. Thomas is a very modern person. It's all about him. What I see, what I touch, what I believe in that case, because it's my experience. And so this story, though it's told 2,000 years ago, is something which is very much understandable to us today. The other apostles, Thomas was not with them, we are told in the gospel, that first day that our Lord appeared to them. And yet they gave testimony and they gave witness and they said, we've seen our Lord. They just simply told them, we've seen him, he's alive. The women in the morning, they see an empty tomb. Later on, subsequently, they see our Lord in the garden. The same with Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene first finds an empty tomb. She goes back and tells the apostles. John and Peter run off. And they find also an empty tomb. Somewhere in the midst of all of this, our Lord appears to Peter. We have it in the gospel, but we don't have any recounting of the actual episode. And then we also have that St. John tells us that when he looks into the empty tomb and sees the linens folded, he believes. It's all it takes. It doesn't take a lot. But Thomas is the one when he's told after all of these things, the women tell them we saw him in the garden this morning, the, the apostles tell them we saw our Lord on the first day of the week. And Thomas is just simply adamant. Unless I see these things myself, I'm not going to believe what you say. Now, what's interesting is when our Lord comes, this is a rebuke to Thomas this day. This is not to Thomas' glory. His profession of faith is glorious. But what our Lord does in rebuking him, we have a couple of occasions in the gospel when our Lord rebukes people after the resurrection. And this is one of them. Thomas, you want to see my hands? Come, put your finger in the hole. You want to see this side? Well, come and put your whole hand into my open side. And stop being incredulous, but believe. It's a rebuke. The Gospel of St. Mark says the same thing, that when our Lord appears to the, uh, the apostles, he rebukes them for not believing the women who came and said that we had seen the Lord. And it's a peculiar. It's peculiar because we have other stories recounted during these days of people who do not recognize our Lord. The two disciples of Emmaus walk with our Lord for hours, even have him stay at his, their home and have sit down to dinner with him and still don't recognize him. Mary Magdalene, when she first sees our Lord, she thinks he's a gardener. She doesn't recognize him. And this is an amazing thing because what did the fathers of the church, in commenting on these different episodes, 
They say that clearly our Lord is recognized in this new existential state, his resurrection. He is recognized according to the spiritual disposition of the individual seeing him. So the apostles on that morning, they recognize him immediately when he appears in the middle of the room. The doors are all locked. And yes, the doors will always be locked at 10 because we're trying to control crowd control here. So if you get here after 10 and the doors are locked, please don't pound during the gospel. And so when our Lord appears in the middle of the crowd, in the middle of the apostles, they recognize him immediately. But in all of these episodes, our Lord never rebukes any of these individuals. He doesn't rebuke the disciples of Emmaus. He doesn't rebuke Mary Magdalene. He says her name, Mariam. And then she recognizes him completely. That's all it takes. But there is a rebuke to those who do not believe the others when they tell them that we've seen him. And our Lord rebukes them straightforward. The apostles earlier, because they didn't believe the women, and this place Thomas is rebuked because you were acquiring and demand proof. This is kind of that teenage prayer that certainly all of us had at some point. If you exist, prove it to me. If it exists, if this whole religion thing actually means something really, prove it to me. It's something that we do some point during our life. Because when things don't go our way, the way we expect creation is supposed to unfold, then we demand of the origin of all things to prove itself. This is what St. Thomas is saying. Unless I see where those nails went in, I will not believe this. It has nothing to do with the apostles. It has nothing to do with the women. It has to do with me. And this actually comes in at a very good point. Why does our Lord rebuke St. Thomas then? Why does he rebuke the apostles earlier but he doesn't rebuke the people who do not recognize him. He doesn't rebuke those who do not recognize him because it's just a question of their spiritual growth. The more that they mature and the more they move in the light, they recognize our Lord today, now in the resurrection. Not as a historical fact, but that he is risen and present in my life right now, at this moment. And so they see our Lord. And it's the same thing for us. The deeper that we enter into our Catholic faith, the deeper that we enter into this light of revelation of the resurrection and of a new Sunday, the more that we see the reality of our Lord today in his resurrection and his power and his strength. But our Lord rebukes those who reject the testimony of the others who are completely trustworthy. These men and these women are not somebody you meet on a street corner in New York who's just howling away about the end of the world. These are people that Thomas has known for years and he rejects what they have to say. That's why our Lord rebukes them. Our Lord rebukes the apostles in the Gospel of St. Mark because they refuse to believe the women in the morning who come and say, we saw him in the garden. They have known these women for years. These are the women who followed our Lord around over those years. It was a mobile camp, as it were, but these were the housekeepers and the cooks who were taking care of our Lord and taking care of the apostles. These were the women who devoted themselves, body and soul, to this ministry of announcing the good tidings of redemption. And out of hand, you reject what they said, but having said they saw me in the garden. Of course he rebukes them. And so it's a very beautiful thing when we make application in it today and especially in the situation in which we live. You know, for about the last decade, we've been trying to dupe ourselves that texting and emailing were exactly the same thing as meeting people face to face and how wrong we were. Why is it that we reject wisdom? 
Why is it that we reject the light of the Lord so easily and think that we can just recreate things the way we wish? That a text is the same thing as speaking to someone. We are learning in a very hard lesson that people matter. Human beings breathing near us. We are learning a lesson which our Lord rebukes Thomas for because Thomas rejects the testimony of those people who have been with him for over these last years of our Lord's ministry. And if nothing else comes out of this, not in a religious context, but in a human context, if nothing else comes out of the fact that we recognize that other people, as God has created this world, are essential to our well-being and our sanity. Zoom does not replace human contact. It's a picture. And anyone who's ever picked up a photo of Aunt Tilly off of the piano and wept because she died 15 years ago and you still can't see her understands the picture does not replace the person. And so what our Lord is giving on a supernatural sense is this testimony of the faith from the morning of the resurrection. You are part of that chain to communicate to the others around you this glory and transfiguration of our Lord's resurrection. The question becomes is whether or not we are trustworthy witnesses to that testimony. And so if we come out of this whole crisis on a purely natural level and our phones remain more securely in our pockets or better in a drawer in the kitchen or locked up in our purse rather than constantly in our hand so that we learn how to look at people once again, then forget about a virus. We will have dodged a huge bullet in humanity and will have understood that the last 10 years were all rather silly. To think somehow that a computer in my pocket can replace contact with other people, that's the arrogance. The boomers, well, you know, we have to attach emoji to those, and so the boomers are made fun of by the younger generation. But that's only because the boomers remember talking to people and talking on the phone and hearing voices and being, having an emotion communicated in these things. But if we learn how to put all these things down and recognize the value of the people that God has created around us, then we have already gained a great blessing from this whole episode. And on a supernatural level, the more deeply our faith becomes. But the faith has to be incarnated within a real person who communicates the gospel to others. Websites do not convert people. People bring the grace of conversion to people. And this is why St. Thomas is rebuked, because he's rejected all the women and he's rejected his colleagues among the apostles for no reason at all except his own personal arrogance and a demand that God justify himself and show me those wounds. Show me those places in his hands. Show me that open wound in his side. It's a terrible act of arrogance, which is why they are the episodes that our Lord rebukes people for, for having rejected the worthy testimony of people and witness that other people that they know but he does not rebuke those who simply need to grow in the spiritual life. He does not rebuke those who simply need to hear the name, Mariam, to all of a sudden recognize at that moment. Imagine her frustration at that time, all of a sudden recognizing after having been standing here talking to him for who knows how long, and then all of a sudden, oh, and she falls down in front of him because the re her response in that faith of the resurrection, in fact, she falls down in front of him and starts grabbing his knees, hanging on to him. It's, very, it's a very beautiful image. 
And so none of us are rebuked unless we reject the testimony of those around us. And none of us are worthy to be rebuked if we are witnesses of the resurrection. But what we pray for this day is that that light and that grace to see within us each grows and that we can enter into that beautiful little phrase that our Lord says to Thomas after saying, so you believe now because it's been proven to you. And he says, blessed, happy are those rather, contented. Blessed are those rather who have not seen, who have not demanded that these things be proven to them personally in their own arrogance. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet who believe. May God put us among those ranks and make us in his divine life worthy witnesses to that resurrection to those around us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We will continue with the creed on page 748. We believe in one God, Church, we confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, <clears throat> to the resurrection of the dead. Itelvot madeb heida locho, walvot alocho dam pare tayo. Weinek sevo tayo boto keyun lel baito kusudem hayeklo on kodesho. special transfer him for new sunday
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, St. Mary, St. Jude, and St. Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. James, the brother of the Lord, on page 794. 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation. Purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. O holy altar of God, peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you, peace to you, O minister of God, peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Peace, love, love and faith, faith brothers and sisters. sisters. From God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of God, and peace be with us. Amen. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high and look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O oh God the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice, relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son. We ask that this mystery instituted for our salvation 
not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, and adore you, and give you thanks, O Maker of all things, visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem in the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven. The angels, archangels, and heavenly hosts all sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns and with sweet, ne never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations. They cry out and they proclaim. Father, King of ages, and giver of all holiness, holy is your only Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit, who delves into all things, even into the depths of God. You are holy and almighty, the Creator and the Good One. You formed us from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise. When we had transgressed your commandment and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful Father, you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, through the prophet you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the holy and ever-Virgin Mary, and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Pretty Elay song. Wabiyamo howled of them, Hashoni lay my bed high. And Sabe Lachma beda, Kodi Shoto, O Barahu Kode. Waxoya bel talmida o karomara Sabahula mehne kulhu Hono denita Ahuru dilan Dahlo faikun wahlav sagie Metakoseo metihem Hosoyon how may we hide on Allah, Allah means? O Kano Al Kuso, Damsi Homen Hamro Homen Mayo, Barahu Kadesh. We are built Talmida Karomara. Sabishtawa mehne kulhu Hono denitao Demao dila dia tiki hadato Dahlo faikun wahlav sagie Eter shadu meti hab Hosoyon haume wa hoye dan alam Alameen.
Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, we remember your death, your resurrection, your ascension into heaven. You're sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glory is second coming when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people, and your inheritance implore you, and through you, and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, Bless our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Aninorio. Anin Morio, Anin Morio, Nite Moro Hokayo Kadisho, Onahenda Lainu Alu Korabono, Ono. Since he may make this bread a life-giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies, the body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of the new covenant, a life-giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded on the rock of faith, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world, and for the holy places that you have glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the orders of the church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those who are praying here with us and those who are, here, are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. 
Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar. For those that have been offered and those who have desired to make an offering but were unable. Those who we have remembered and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them in your fear, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John the forerunner, St. Stephen the archdeacon and first martyr, St. James the brother of the Lord, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and priest and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teaching in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. To our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever.
O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now, so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us, so that we may be worthy to share in your holy mysteries through the grace of your own, our Lord Jesus Christ, and his mercy and in his love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. The Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O oh God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness. With the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O Jesus, our Lord, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and all the saints, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.